Hey there gardeners, this is Dave with Growing the Home Garden. Today I wanted to show you a really cool squash plant. This is called Trombetta de Albenga, and it is a beautiful climbing squash, or zucchini, whichever, zucchini is a member of the squash family. Uh, and it gets humongous, okay? This thing grows all over the place, uh, and it really is a nice, delicious squash for cooking. And there's even some options for it later in the season. If you let it go, uh, a little bit longer on the vine make it it'll grow like up to 36 inches and then you can use it like a winter squash so let me show you a little bit about this squash and what it looks like and how it grows so we planted this squash oh probably six weeks to two months ago i don't remember the exact time for it and we put it over here along these posts on the outside of our garden we intended to you know let it grow up these posts and then come across on some poles, which I haven't put up there yet. But right now it is just starting to climb along the deer fencing that we put up. So you can see it just is growing everywhere. It's got these tendrils that grasp onto things and let it hold on real tight. I'm, I actually need to come in and secure this a little bit better because these staples I had in here have actually pulled off. But it grows really fast. In fact, one year we grew a similar variety to it and that variety actually took over my kids swing set because they completely planted the seeds right next to the swing set and it just ate the whole swing set that year which is you know hilarious but over here you can see how this is growing it's got kind of a very thin neck to it and then the head down over here the main part of the squash is right there but you can eat the whole thing and the ideal length of squash is probably about 15 inches to two feet long when you harvest it. So that's a really big squash plant, um, but it's really tasty. It's got this buttery type flavor to it. Now there's some other ones over here. This one is ready to be harvested actually. At that size, you see how long that particular squash is but they're really good. And my favorite way to use them is actually to fry them up and make like squash medallions to eat with spaghetti and Italian type foods. So it's really cool. So we've got this one here and just a little further down, we've got this other one. And this one is growing a little bit more horizontally than vertically. And that's probably because I trained the other one for a minute. And you need to kind of train it to go where you want it to go. If you don't keep up with it, it's going to turn into this where it just kind of starts to sprawl and take over. If you've got the space for it, that's great. But if you want to grow it vertically, that's probably the best way to do it uh, because it can save you a lot of space. Plus, in the heat of summer, I'm hoping that this will help shade a little portion of the interior of the garden over there. There's you can see that it's gonna get pretty hot. In fact, this week, later this week, is supposed to be in the upper 90s here in Tennessee. So now the squash, it's got all the typical pests that every other squash does. You can see we've got a little bit of leaf damage, but it's not too bad. I've seen some squash bugs on it. It can be affected by the borer, but I think with the amount of growth that it has and how fast it does and how it roots when it touches the ground, it can actually withstand some of that borer damage just because you can root in other places. Um, but it does, it, it has a ton of flowers on it all over the place. Now, check this out over here. Speaking of squash pests, we've got a pair of squash bugs that look like they are going through the mating process. But on these squash plants, you wanna go through and take a look at the undersides. And look, there's another one, that's a nymph stage. I'm not sure which stage that one's at, but that is a squash bug nymph. And you will notice that there's probably some eggs somewhere right there like that. So you just knock those eggs off, just scrape them off with your fingers. And in fact, there's a little nymph there. I think I just squished one with my thumb. But it's a really cool plant. This is Trombetta de Albenga. And you can find it in some various places, but it is an heirloom. Uh, in the wintertime, I would recommend you start to save some seeds probably several weeks before your frost date. Stop harvesting and let them grow out so you can get really good seed production out of it. Um, and then you, you can use the flesh of those that you let grow out as a winter squash. And then over the wintertime, enjoy that. It tastes similar to, say, a butternut squash would. Um, but it's a really cool squash plant. 
So I've come over here to the other side so you can see the squash a little bit better. I've got some melons growing down below. But over here is kind of the size you want it to be when you harvest. This is probably about 18 inches, somewhere between 18 and 2 feet, all from the beginning to the end. And it's the perfect size to go ahead and harvest that one. And then there's another one right there, but they grow fast. I mean, once they start to create a squash on it, they can be that large in just, you know, a few days, probably four or five days. So it will produce a lot if it's in a nice happy spot. And this one looks very happy. So Trombetta di Albenga is a great squash to add to your garden if you've got the room for it. If you have a smaller garden, I probably wouldn't recommend it unless you can come up with some sort of a trellising system that's going to support the whole plant because it can get really, really large if it's nice and happy. These are pretty happy. I expect them to grow probably twice as large as what you're seeing right here within the next month or two. Uh, so definitely, I love it but it's got to have the right place like a number of plants do. If you've got the wrong spot for it, don't have the right conditions for it, pick something smaller, something more of a container. If you've got like a, a back porch that you're growing it on, definitely wouldn't put it there. If you've got, you know, a large garden, you've got room. So go on, give it a shot. But I'm Dave with Growing the Home Garden. I really appreciate you watching this video. Please give me a like and a subscribe if you enjoyed this and want to see some more garden stuff. But thanks again for watching.